Today I'm talking about the movie You People. Uh, the, one of the star actors in the movie, Eddie Murphy, uh, is definitely playing a, a role a little bit different from the role he normally plays. He, he's usually the sort of the comedian and, and funny, but in this particular movie, not so much. Uh, the overall theme of the movie is, is a little bit more serious than one might think from looking at the title. It looks on the surface like it might be a romantic comedy, um, but it's actually more dealing with, with race issues between, uh, specifically between uh, blacks and Jewish. Uh, the, the movie starts out with, a, with one of the main characters, Ezra. Uh, he's a he's a Jewish guy, and he's his mother is very intent on fixing him up with someone. They um, the one of the beginning scenes they show them at their their synagogue, and she's trying to fix him up with this girl that's there, and so they kind of show they sh sort of show some scenes of that, and he tries dating her. I guess it doesn't really go anywhere so anyway Ezra works at this accounting firm so at one point he's he's I guess he's leaving for the day and as he runs out to get get his uber um he sees what he thinks is his uber and he basically just jumps in this woman's car and she's not his uber so um there is a bit of a confrontation. It's extremely awkward. Um, this is where he meets Amira. And <laughs> at first, you know, they come from very different backgrounds. They're very different people. And she's like, you know, what, what the hell are you doing in my car? And he's, you know, he, he sort of tries to explain that, yeah, she, he, his Uber actually uh, looked like her uh, Uber driver's picture and it was the same type of car and everything and she was a little bit surprised and so he, he finally says you know I can see you're having trouble finding your way around I can help you uh, get to where you're trying to go because I know the city really well so anyway they meet and I guess out of a sort of an obligation or an apology Ezra feels you know uh, he asked her out to dinner and they they sort of start to talk to each other and even though they come from very different backgrounds or very uh different worlds that they were brought up in they actually kind of hit it off so they start dating and uh at, at the beginning you know that's fine when they're just dating there's no issues between them the problems they'll really begin to arise when they involve their families. Now, in this movie, you got to keep in mind that essentially what the movie is really focusing on is the differences between, it's not just blacks, black people dating white people, but it's more specifically uh, the, her background is from uh, she was brought up in a household that was nation of Islam. They are generally at odds with Jewish people. Those two don't really mix. The the people that are in nation of Islam uh, do not have a lot of nice things to say about Jewish people. So <laughs> I'm sure the feeling between the two probably is mutual. So this is essentially something that throughout the movie is creating a lot of the tension plus some of the people depicted in the movie are a little bit more a lot more ignorant than they should be anyway as the movie progresses the the first thing uh ezra does is he brings amira to meet his family and his family is nice the and they don't they do seem accepting of amira they're not um they're they're not really I don't think his mother, Shelly, was exactly expecting him to bring home a black woman, but she wasn't exactly, uh, she wasn't really set back that much. She was just like, okay, you know, she was just really happy that he was with someone, period, because she was wondering if he was ever going to get married. So she, 
she is happy, go, has this happy attitude, she's smiling, she's joking, but she is absolutely, completely tone deaf. She uh, starts out, um, when, when Amira comes in the house, she makes a big deal, uh, makes a big issue about trying to improve how prove to everyone or prove specifically to Amira that she's not racist. So one of the very first things she does when Amira's walking in is she makes some comments about her housekeeper Lupita and how great the housekeeper is and how uh, she's all like family to her. And of course none of this is true and you know the only reason she's making a, such a big deal out of it is because yeah this is a black woman coming in and so I guess she's trying to show, hey, she doesn't discriminate against people of other races. And I don't think she would have done this if another Jew, if he brought home a Jewish lady. But anyway, uh, she goes on and it doesn't stop with that. She starts talking about, um, so she says something about Magic Johnson, which ordinarily I don't think she would have said anything about him. And then she starts to go off on uh, just out of the blue. Um, not prompted. She's saying, oh, you know, how terrible is police brutality? And, you know, she just pops that right up out of nowhere. And her family, Ezra, is pretty embarrassed by it. He doesn't know what to think. Um, uh, Ezra's sister, Lisa, comes down. They introduce her. Uh, she's part of the LGBTQ community. And of course, Shelley's makes a big deal about, oh, we're accepting of that too, you know. So she's got this big uh, song and dance she's doing about being super tolerant when you know that's, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how sincere that is. Even though she's got a big smile on her face, well, you know, how sometimes those people will, will act. Ezra decides to take it upon himself to meet with Amira's parents. Uh, Akbar and uh, Fatima. So uh, he he takes them out to uh, Roscoe's Chicken, and he introduces himself, and he's telling them that he's intent on marrying their daughter. And he essentially what he's doing is he's trying to to get their approval. Uh, Akbar immediately uh, takes exception to him. He he does not like the idea of Amira marrying a white guy and uh, especially a Jewish white guy be and this comes from his Muslim beliefs he's not exactly uh, thrilled with it and he really kind of runs Ezra through the ringer so they they don't it, it, I don't think that really went off super well uh, eventually uh, after the after they meet uh, Ezra does mention it to Amira, and apparently she's kind of a little bit upset about him doing that without even having told her, because she feels like, well, you know, you didn't, you didn't confide in me that you were going to do this at all. And then he starts taking out this ring that he's going to propose to her with, and he's starting to kind of backpedal a little bit. Well, she sees him taking out the ring box, she's all, you know, excited. Now this ring, keep in mind, this ring that he had gotten her apparently was sort of a small ring. His friend Mo, uh, with whom he, he does podcasts, uh, was telling Ezra that, hey, you know, this is kind of a small ring. Um, you know, and then Ezra decides, you know, he's got to come up with this, <laughs> this story. So he decides that he's going to, you know, come up with a song and dance about it being a ring from his grandmother and it was uh to, to throw an a added uh, bonus on it. it was going to be a ring from the holocaust and he was, they make some remark about oh yeah if it's holocaust no one can challenge it you know and all this that and the other uh so needless to say when he's actually proposing to amira he's um he shows her the ring she's actually pretty impressed with the ring anyway. He doesn't need to really say anything more, but he goes on to emphasize that he got that, you know, it was his grandmother's ring and uh, in his words, she got it from the Holocaust. And to me, 
there were a couple things about that I, I think probably many Jewish people might find offensive. You know, you get a ring from the Holocaust. I mean, I think that's particularly offensive, especially given that uh, during a lot of the Holocaust, you, rings and jewelry were something that were taken away from many Jewish people. So to me, this is something that I, I think was very insensitive to his own people. I'm kind of making me think he doesn't know a lot about his own family's history. And then uh, she pointed out that because of their ages, uh, his grandmother would have had to have been, you know, it would have been hard at her age to have been there at that time. And I think he made some <laughs> remark, oh, she was like three or four when she got engaged. I mean, he just, to him, the whole thing is a joke. But, you know, I could see how that could be construed as somewhat insensitive. As the movie goes on, both of their families get together and when they finally do meet, um, it really does rapidly degrade into a very awkward situation. They were in disagreement about uh, Farrakhan. Uh, Farrakhan has said a lot of very anti-Semitic things, and Akbar was very pro-Farrakhan. In fact, he got a, a little kufi that was given him directly from Louis Farrakhan, and he was very proud of that. And, of course, a lot of Jewish people are not going to be very happy with, with Farrakhan because of all the anti-Semitic things he said. So this leads to some definitely interesting dinner conversation. But not to be outdone, Shelley, in the process of trying to take a candle off the table, she somehow manages to set fire to his kufi while it's on his head and it's burning on his head and of course uh, his, his, wife, his wife sees that and they all start to you know the other people see that and it's like oh shit you know they start screaming and then uh, and then she knocks it off his head and to to get it you know to put put it out and then she dumps i don't know i think it was like wine or something on top of it it flares up even more and then it and then she just stomps, you know, they're stomping on it. And it's like, wow, you talk about disrespectful. This is this guy's prized uh, kufi hat that he got from Farrakhan himself. And they're, <laughs> and they're burning and stomping on it. That did not go, that dinner did not go well at all. And then to top it off, near the end, um, um, Fatima, Akbar's wife, was trying to, I don't know, be diplomatic, and she said something to the effect that, well, he has, he has more of these kufis. It's not so bad. Um, but Shelley doesn't leave it go at that. She just, uh, she comes up with some other remark. Oh, so he has a whole closet full of kufis, just like you know. I mean, you know, you know that was a prize, a man's prized possession, and. And she couldn't just leave it at that. Uh, you know, that, that's, that seemed very insensitive to me. Needless to say, as the movie progresses, um, they have, the two families have very different ideas about how to officiate the wedding. Uh, of course, the, um, the Jewish family, they they're, want a rabbi. You know, they want the traditional Jewish wedding. Akbar says that he wants to use an imam and uh shelly didn't hear it right so when he says we want they want an imam she hears it and she says um and who's anti-mom i mean that was just you know there again more uh displaying her ignorance even more so that that particular part did not go over so well um, as the two families were getting to know each other, uh, Shelley was taking um, Amira to a hair salon, and they were thinking that maybe they'd spend the day to, to sort of talk to each other and get to know each other. But when they walked in the salon, uh, one of the very first things that happened was um, 
as they were checking in, a, a woman walked by them and walked right on into the salon, a, a white woman. And in the process of this happening, uh, it didn't really stand out. You wouldn't, looking at it the way she just walked in, it didn't, you know, I, I think really seem like it meant anything. But Shelly jumps up and she's trying to say, oh, how, ra how could you be so racist, you know, uh, letting this other woman just walk right in and she uh she was really basking in her ignorance and of course everyone is sort of confused has a confused look on her face the receptionist is like well, what what are you talking about you know but before she even had a chance to say anything this woman uh walks up to the counter right beside her she wasn't a client she worked there so of course she just walk right into the salon I mean that you know and then of course that shut Shelly up but that just part of the uh, tone deafness that this woman has she just didn't didn't appreciate you know what would she have done that if she had been with a with one of her Jewish friends no you know that would never have happened so she's trying to there again she's going way way beyond reason to try to prove you know that she's open-minded which just go which just makes her look really stupid is a big embarrassment for everyone there so anyway on the other side of the coin when um akbar uh tries to get to know ezra a little bit better they go around to some different places uh he takes him to a barber shop and his his idea is he wants to figure out there's some way he can he can make Ezra uncomfortable. So he takes him around to places where he knows he's going to be uncomfortable. This is a black barber shop, and he looks so out of place sitting in that black barber shop. Everyone else is looking at him because of the way he's dressed, the way he acts, um, and. He, you know, you know, Akbar knew that he was going to make this a really awkward situation for him, which is exactly what he did. And then Akbar had this other great idea because Ezra did mention he was good at basketball. He thought, "Hey, let me let me take him to a basketball court," and and so he does that. And he says, "Hey, Ezra, you know, go play some ball. You say you're so great at it," and um, <laughs> you know. I'm sure he he knew he just knew that he wasn't being any good at basketball, and he gets his phone out. He starts fil uh, filming him, and at the very beginning, he actually it it's true. Ezra doesn't. Ezra first thing Ezra does is he trips over, and he he doesn't look like he's really <laughs> um, any kind of great basketball player. But then all of a sudden, he gets the ball and he starts shooting hoops. And um, I think somewhat to Akbar's dismay, he actually looks like he's a really good basketball player. So, um, you know, that, that was kind of interesting. Another thing that um, Akbar did to try to make Ezra uncomfortable is during their bachelor party, he insisted on following Ezra out to Las Vegas. And in the process, his idea, and it did work, uh, to a certain extent, it did make Ezra uncomfortable that he was there, you know, and do ping that their relationship wasn't that great to start out with. Uh, Ezra felt very self-conscious and it didn't help in one of the scenes there. I, I thought was kind of funny uh, that all his friends in Vegas were all razzing him about his coke. And I mean, there was a bunch of guys who were saying, oh yeah, where, you're, where's the Coke guy? Who's the Coke like? You know, Ezra was a big Coke Coke expert and and they were, they were in a public place. Several people were yelling at him, hey, where can you, can you get my cocaine? Can you, you know, and this, that, and the other. And then at one point, one guy walks by and he throws, <laughs> oh, this, is, this was hilarious. He throws this big, huge bag of cocaine on Ezra's lap says here bro he you know, throws it to him and it's like well you know and I mean in real life that's pretty absurd they're not going to be yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs about cocaine and and all this and then someone's not just going to throw you a big bag of what 
you know, twenty thousand dollars worth of cocaine. I mean, it was a big, huge bag full of it. But the idea was that this was super embarrassing to Ezra because he, you know, of all people, he didn't want Akbar to see that. You know, it looked like he was some big, big time coke dealer, I guess, which you know didn't seem like it was consistent with the way he was acting in the rest of the the movie, but I guess this was something that was supposedly from his past. As the movie continues, um, Akbar continues to be on Ezra's case and continues to say, make nasty little remarks. Uh, Shelley continues her, her insensitivity and it eventually reaches a point where Ezra and Amira uh, just decide enough is enough, so they they call off the the wedding completely, and they just decide to end their relationship. So this is you know this is something that's kind of sad, and um, Ezra in does one of his podcasts, uh, and in the podcast he he's talking with his his uh, co-host Mo. Um, and they're they're talking about uh, inter interracial relationships, and Ezra essentially has has come to the conclusion that the differences were too great to overcome, and that he was essentially saying, well, that this doesn't really, you know, this type of thing doesn't really work very well. So in the process of him making this podcast, though, it it he is pretty impassioned when he's talking in the podcast, and he seems to be very um, you know, uh, very compelling in the way he's speaking, and it gets the attention of Akbar and Shelley. They're both listening to it, and especially with Akbar, he's hearing it, and he's also got a friend of his sitting next to him, talking to him, and you know, his, his friend is saying, Well, you should have tried to get this out of Ezra and that out of Ezra, like. Um, you know, okay, well, Ezra, he was saying, well, like, Ezra could just be like a, you know, ATM, he'd get some money out of him, get him a, a new pool and a, a, you know, new car or something like that, and, like, that was his objective, and I think Akbar sort of realized how absurd that sounded. Akbar himself looked like he's probably doing pretty good, he was in a really nice car, and it didn't, I don't know if he, having, hearing his friend tell him stuff and then his friend is kind of razzing him saying, hey, you know, um, I think he had some other name. I think he called him Woody because his name had originally been Woody and he took on this Muslim name. But his friend was saying, yeah, you're, you know, well, what's wrong with Woody? That's, and then he also pointed out. Uh, Dak Bar, you know, you did some things too. I mean, yeah, you saw this guy with uh, Ezra with some cocaine stuff, but you also had your, <laughs> you know, your things that you were doing stuff like that when you were that age. And so, Akbar, I think he eventually reflects on what he what he did. Same thing with Shelley. I think she looked at it and maybe felt a little bit, you know, bad about it. So, the next scene in the movie. Shelly wanted Ezra to help her get some particular type of, of shoe. So ostensibly, um, she was bringing him down to this place to buy these shoes. And so the, he, when they're there, they're out on the sidewalk, and he happens to see a mirror, and he thinks that he's only seeing her by chance. And then they come up, they start say a couple things to each other, and then Akbar shows up. And at that point, uh, Akbar and Shelley both admit that they had gotten together because they felt bad about what they had done. And they were trying to uh, bring them back together. And they were essentially saying that they really would like to see them get married. So, um, you know, and at that point, I felt like that sort of, that sort of gave me more of a, a good feeling at the end. As far as the overall movie was concerned, I really did like the way that um, Eddie Murphy performed in it. Uh, he was not in there as a comedian. Normally you think of an Eddie Murphy movie as where he's doing goofy stuff. Uh, you don't normally think of him as 
someone that's, you know, kind of angry and militant and, and uh, you know, not always such a nice guy. Uh, but in terms of the, you know, in terms of the acting, it was great. He played the role very well. Um, there again, I would not really classify this as just a lighthearted romantic comedy. It did have some uh, comedic moments in it, but overall, I would say it's it's a romantic, but sort of a romantic drama movie. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be what I just say is your typical romantic comedy. And it did deal with some fairly heavy issues with race race relationships, um, especially issues with. Uh, the um, Muslims and the Jewish communities. Uh, I don't think it would represent your average um, black and white relationship, though, because some of the extremes that they came, that they brought to the table, were a lot more than a regular relationship would be. Um, so, anyway, I'd say it's a it's a worthwhile movie to watch. I just you know. Do be aware, it's really, it's not exactly a lighthearted comedy, so just keep that in mind. Uh, please let me know if you have any comments or thoughts below. Thank you so much for watching.